Hi there, this is Stephen Rosell, Senior Technical Specialist at Autodesk, focused on Maya, and I'm going to cover the new PSD workflow in Maya 2016 Extension 2. Now, PSD is an acronym for Pose Space Deformation, and it usually refers to uh, a system that will allow you to do corrective blend shapes, essentially, on top of standard skinning to fix uh, inherent problems in a, in a skinned mesh. So the character we're going to be using here is the Garard character from Witcher 3, which you probably recognize, pretty popular game. Uh, this is actually on loan to us by a studio called CD Project. So we want to thank them for letting us use their cool character. So for starters, we'll talk about the UI that you're going to be using, Animation Editor's Pose Editor. The Pose Editor is the new uh, interface for creating and managing uh, your poses and the related targets or corrective targets for those poses. So what we're going to do is go in and take a look at the existing skin. So you'll see here I have a shoulder and if I rotate this shoulder it actually looks pretty good. The skinning is not too bad but if I kind of go outside of the typical range of motion which sometimes you do with animation you can see I start to get some inadvertent problems where I have skin problems, uh, particularly for the gear, where I have pieces of the gear that are interpenetrating. Same thing is true if I go forward. You can see if I go forward, all of a sudden now the belt uh, strap actually is, is protruding through the shoulder pad, which is not going to look right. So I want to go in and fix this. So the first thing I want to do is go in and create what's called a pose interpolator. Now, a pose interpolator is basically essentially the logic uh, that's going to drive all of these relationships between the poses and the various the various targets. So for starters, what you'll notice is I end up with some neutral poses. What these allow me to do is set reference points for the different types of corrections that I want to create. So if you rotate your joint to a specific pose, you can double click on one of these and it'll send it back to that pose, that neutral pose. So these are all separated out based on different types of motion. So we have a swing motion, which is going to be kind of the up-down motion or the forward backward motion and then we have the twist motion which is going to be the rotation around the joint so it's going to be equivalent to like a roll so this is set up by default so typically uh, it's going to find out the right axis if for some reason it doesn't just so you know if you go into the advanced settings you have the ability to set your twist axis here so your twist is always going to be one axis uh, either or uh, your swing is actually going to be a combination of the other two axes so in this case, it actually did get the axis correct. It is the x-axis, but I could change that if I needed to. We'll come back to the advanced settings in a minute, uh, but I want to talk about a couple of other things. So you can use these if, if you need to. You can use all three as reference points for twist, swing, and then one called swing and twist. I'm going to uh, show you an example of all three. So for starters, let's do one that's only going to be a swing motion. So I'm actually going to swing the arm up, and by hyperextending it a little bit, going up, you can see there that I've created a skinning issue. So now I'll go in, and relative to this, I'm going to create a pose. Uh, we'll just simply uh, use the default, but we'll go in and rename this just for visual clarity, and we'll call this up shoulder, just so I can know what it is. And now I need to go in and start to correct it. So not only did I store the pose, which is the rotation of the joints, but I also created a blend shape, which is going to be driven by that pose. So you'll see the edit button. That means I'm in an editable mode. Similar to the blend shape workflow that I've shown before, this is the ability to go in and make changes to the shape not directly on the shape, but on an underlying blend target. So essentially deltas or offsets. So I'm going to take a face path there, and I'm going to take this entire section with soft select on, and I'm just going to kind of pick that up, pull it, and move it in. I might want to come around the back and take a specific area and kind of tighten it up there a little bit. Um, and then I also want to go in and use things like the sculpt tool. So the sculpt tool has a couple of different modes, like grab, for instance, where I can use the grab brush to kind of push and pull some points around. Or I can just use something like the sculpt tool where I can just kind of paint over this area just to get this kind of broad kind of offset. So you can use a combination of selection and just simple transforms, soft select, as well as sculpting. And what that does is it creates a an offset that is stored and triggered based on that rotation. So if I go back to my neutral pose and then double click here, you can see it triggers that on and off. That's before and after. So you can turn them on and off here with this little button. And then if you want to actually see this in action, you can simply grab the joint and start to rotate that and actually see how that looks. So there is uh, equivalent to the neutral pose. I rotate that up and you can see that correction start to trigger. And then right about there is the end of the pose where it's triggering the full 
uh, corrective blend shade. So the next thing I want to do is go in and create a different type of correction. So let's go back to the neutral pose, and this time we'll do a twist. So I'm actually going to twist this forward. That's twisting the shoulder forward, which uh, is a fairly natural motion. It's a little bit, you know, unusual sometimes, but it will happen occasionally. So now we're going to, relative to that pose, uh, create a, a new target. Uh, and you'll notice the one I previously set up was for swing. I'm going to switch this one to twist. Uh, and we'll rename this uh, something like roll shoulder. Good enough. And now I want to do the same thing. Just go in and make a few simple uh, corrections. I'm in edit mode. So now I just basically have to go in and figure out where I need to make my corrections. I'm going to do something very simple. I'm just going to go in and take those faces and just kind of push them forward to get rid of that inner penetration that we're seeing. I'm going to grab this. Oh, actually, the wrong one. I'm going to grab this and kind of push that forward like so. Actually, wrong axis. There we go. And simple as that, I've gone in and I've corrected that problem. So now I can see before and after. That's what it looked like before. That's what it looks like after, and it gets triggered anytime I twist that rotation or twist that joint forward, uh, that's when it gets triggered. So then lastly, I might wanna go in and create a third corrective blend shape. So let's go back to a neutral pose, and this time we'll kind of move forward like so, and then maybe add a little bit of swing rotation this way. And now I'm creating this uh, kind of roll forward, uh, not roll, but this uh, spin forward. So we'll create another pose. And once again, I'll just go in and I'll rename this. And this time I'll call this forward shoulder. So I've got three different ones. This one, instead of being swing only, because I actually added a little bit of an X rotation, I'm going to make this a swing and a twist. Uh, and then I'm going to go in and start to correct this now. So once again, I'll just go in and I'll add a few offsets here and maybe add an offset uh, over here, pulling that forward. And then I might actually want to go in and have this go down just a little bit because that's actually shooting out a little bit too far and maybe even pull this in a little bit, something like that. I'm not gonna go too crazy with this, but, oh, and I also probably wanna smooth that out a little bit. So let's actually um, grab this and go into the sculpt tool and I'll use my shift, but I'll just simply smooth that out just to kind of even it up a little bit and we'll quit. And now we'll go in and start to test this. So we'll go back to the neutral pose and this time we'll just kind of freely roll forward and you'll see that I get a nice kind of compression there of that shoulder strap, but I don't get any penetration. Again, if I only go up, then I get uh, a different pose. If I only twist forward, I get a different pose. But then if I kind of go freely, I'm going to get a combination of all three, basically. So what you can see here is if you want to compare them, you can say, what does that look like only with the up shoulder? Or what does that look like only with the roll? Or what does that look like only with the forward? And then you add these all together and you get what ends up being a pretty nice corrective blend shape or series of corrective blend shapes to solve those problems that skinning and, or, or default skinning can't really correct. Now, another thing to point out is if you want to see the actual weights, let's just go back to a neutral pose. You can see that uh, the value here shows the weight. And you can see here, I have a weight of one for all the neutral poses right now, and my up, roll, and forward are set to zero. As soon as I rotate up like so, then you'll notice that's going to start triggering the swing where I have 79% and then 35% of my swing and twist. Whereas if I twist forward, I'm going to get the opposite. It's actually going to be affecting the twist values and it's going to be very slightly affecting my swing and twist. And then of course, when I have my full free rotation where I'm kind of rotating along all three axes, that's when I start to see the values for swing, twist, and, and the combo all kick in. And so when I get to this position here with a little bit of a roll there, you can see I'm getting a, a very even blend of all these, 50% here, 30% there, 80% there, and so on. So obviously I, I did that really quickly, so I could probably make this look a lot better if I spent a little bit of time with it, but you know, I did that in a matter of seconds really. So um, uh, hopefully you get the idea of, what, of the kinds of things that you can do with this. Now I wanna talk about one other thing, and that is what do you do when you have a rig? So I don't have a full rig here, but I set up uh, just kind of a dummy piece over here, which is just a simple hand control. And the hand control 
is actually going to be driving, this is a separate node, uh, and it's going to be driving the rotation of the wrist. So rather than rotating the wrist directly, we're actually driving its rotation through a rig element or a rig object. So watch what happens here. When we select the wrist, and let's say we wanted to do a correction to deal with some creasing or something like that. We'll go in and we'll create a pose interpolator. And as soon as I do that, I get a warning. And it says basically that this um, joint is being driven by another object. So I need to figure out how to deal with that. So it gives you the warning, but you have to go in and kind of uh, make the association yourself. So Basically, what it says is, do you want to create the neutral poses? I'm going to say no, because I don't want the neutral poses relative to the joints. I want them relative to my control object. So I've created an empty pose interpolator now. So now what I need to do is tell the interpolator what is actually driving the targets that I'm going to be creating. So this is where the advanced settings come in again. So if I go in here and turn on advanced settings, what you'll see is I have a section in here for driver settings. And what this means is right now the driver is the right hand, uh, right hand joint, which is basically the wrist. And I want to actually swap it out with this node right here. So the way this works is you can go into this section here and you can add secondary controllers. So I click on the add button and here I can just add and type in the name of the channels that I want to be the control channels. Uh, or I can actually go into the outliner. And for the outliner, I can choose to display my attributes. So if I say I want to display attributes, and now I come in and I find the right-hand controller, I can expand the attributes for that controller, and I can choose the attributes that are driving it. So I'm going to choose rotate. But basically what I want to do is say the rotation, and I'll just choose X, Y, and Z. It could be one or all three. And I'll say the rotation, X, Y, Z, of the hand controller is going to be triggering the target that I'll create. So now I simply say, okay, accept that. And now I can go in and once all this is set up, I can actually just hide the advanced settings for now. Once this is all set up, I can now go in and create my neutral poses. And now the neutral poses will be based on the position or rotation in this case of the auxiliary secondary controller. So now, uh, let's say that I want to rotate this down and do some sort of a corrective blend shape, corrective target. So I can rotate this down, I'll create a pose, and we'll just create a default here. And what you'll see is that when I double click on neutral, it's going to rotate this effector back into place. When I click on this pose, it's going to rotate it into that target pose. Now I can go in and I can begin to modify this as I need to. So say for instance, I wanted to go in and smooth out this deformation down here. I'm in edit mode, so any kind of a sculpt that I might do, like if I use my smooth brush to go in and add a little bit of smoothness there, that's going to apply to the uh, deltas or to the offsets for that pose. So now I can come in here and grab this control object. I can start to rotate this and I can see the effect of that. Again, if I turn that on and off, you can see the before and after. And it's all being driven or controlled by a secondary object. So it's not using the joints directly. It's actually using the rotation values of my control rig. So it's a bit of setup in order to actually use a control rig in this way. You'd have to go in and do all the various parts and pieces in a similar way. But the mechanism is there. And of course, you know, there's uh, accessibility through Python or through Mel to automate some of this if necessary. So hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea of the kinds of things that you can do with post space deformation and the kinds of uh, setup that's involved with the pose editor. It's a very powerful tool, new tool to Maya, one that I think is going to help a lot of people. All right, thanks for your time.